Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. You know, you've probably heard the phrase, your, the phrase, your words matter. And today we're going to talk about how they matter and to the extent of their power in your life. And we're not going to talk about this from a new age woo-woo perspective. This is going to be a biblically based conversation with Connie Strassheim, who is joining me. She's the author of a book called Guard the Mind, Mint the Body. And we know scientifically that we can change the way our brain is working. We can actually change the physicality of our brains when we do the work that's necessary, basically changing those negative thought patterns, removing trauma from our minds and bodies, we can change what our brain looks like so that it's more healthy, more positive. And in doing so, we can actually mend our body. We can heal our body from our mind, not alone. Let's not give ourselves that much power, but through Christ and through the Holy Spirit. So That's going to be our conversation today. And I think you're going to have a ton of takeaways. And I think you're going to have a new perspective on how you can embrace yourself, focus on your identity in Christ, and use that as a stepping stone to heal both your mind and body. And if you aren't in a situation where you feel you need this, I would bet a lot of money if I was a betting person that you know someone who could use this information. So as you listen, take notes or think of someone else you can share it with. Connie Streisheim, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you, Robin. It's an honor and a blessing to be here with you guys. Well, it's a blessing to have someone like you here with us. Um, I've mentioned on the show before, Caroline Leaf, who is a neuropsychologist, and she's done a lot of work in the neuroplasticity field. And She's someone that I really cherish. I cherish her work. I love her insight and how her brain works and all of the information she's put together to show that science is just now catching up with scripture. And I Mm -hmm. love to talk about these things because so many of my clients, and I'm sure so many of the listeners have at one point in time or another, if not currently struggled with mindset, whether it's a negative money mindset, or just doubt, fear, imposter syndrome, all of those things that come up when we are business owners, as well as just individuals in today's society. So I welcome you to the show, and I'm really happy that we get to have this conversation. Before we dive in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to the point where you wrote the book, Guard the Mind, Men for Body? Sure. Yeah. So I'm a medical writer and I'm also the author, co-author or ghostwriter of over 20 health and wellness books. I'm also a prophetic healing prayer minister and I host Zoom prayer meetings twice a month. It's something I've done for the past 15 years. And, you know, I do ministry in um, different settings. I'm also a health coach. And so, and the reason I got into healing and medical writing is because I got sick with chronic Lyme disease 20 years ago. And I was very, very ill for a long time, um, had a lot of issues, was even bedridden at, uh, at one point. And, but the good news is, is God really taught me through my journey what it takes to get well. Because as some of your listeners may know, when you have a complex chronic illness, then it just, your whole world falls apart. And medicine quite often isn't enough. And that was something that God showed me actually very early on. He said, we are tripartite beings. We are a spirit with a soul and a body. We are not a body with a soul and a spirit. And that distinction is really important because if you are a spirit with a body, then that means your spirit man in cooperation with the spirit of God were designed to be the master controllers of your body's chemistry. And so, but the new age, you know, they kind of talk about it backwards. And whenever they mention holistic wellness, they refer to it as healing in body, soul, and spirit. 
And so the, the health of the body is always mentioned first and the health of the spirit is mentioned last. And I believe that God wants us to invert that order and focus on our relationship with him and healing at the higher two parts of who we are, which is our soul and our spirit in cooperation with him. Because when you work at a higher level, you more effectively heal your body, but you also have the mindset of Christ, which is ultimately what's most important, right? Mm, absolutely. And, and I think there's, there's so much to be said about that. You know, we, we know from scripture that we are created in Christ image and he, he yeah. maps out for us how to live, how to be, but he talks so much about, you know, the Holy spirit and having the Holy spirit in us as believers. And that is where our strength, knowledge, power, wisdom comes from. Mm -hmm. And so it makes yes. sense to me that we focus on that first versus the body as almost an exterior part of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really good. And one thing that, you know, being in divine healing ministry, as well as a medical writer, um, it's kind of like God has given me the ability to see how medicine and science merge with the divine to heal. And so it's kind of like, you know, when we talk about um, having the mindset of Christ, there are a lot of ways we can do that. And first and foremost is just developing that relationship with him. Because like you said, he is the source of all wisdom, you know, healing everything good in our lives. And, and what God showed me was that, you know, just as science has proven that we can change our cellular chemistry by speaking the right thoughts by, or yeah, just having the right thoughts, the right beliefs and speaking the right words, just as we can do that, um, with science. So also when we do that, um, when we think God's thoughts, it's even more powerful. It's a superior way to be healed than just thinking any old positive thoughts because God's thoughts are divine. And when we speak God's words, the words he gives us or his word, there is supernatural power in his word to um, change our mindset, to heal our chemistry that goes far and above just what positive thinking can do, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I love to use, um, like when I'm working with my clients, we, we focus on, you know, your beliefs are going to empower your thoughts. Your thoughts are going to influence your feelings, your emotions, which are then yeah. going to influence and empower your choices. And those choices determine your behaviors, your actions that yeah. you take, and ultimately your outcomes. So first and foremost, it's that belief. What do you believe that God is capable yeah. of? Who do you believe he's yeah. called you to be? And mm -hmm. what do you believe are the gifts he's given you? And when we yeah. look at the, the fact that everything indicates from scripture that he wants a relationship with us. He's not a dictator. He's, he's not someone that's just going to hand us, you know, commandments and say, live this way. He wants to be in our lives every single day. And he, he is in us. We are in him. And when we start to, to change the way we see ourselves as being made in his image and then looking at our identity and believing in our identity in him, we can shift the mindset and we can have mm -hmm. more positive thoughts. So I love that whole concept. Something I want to in or talk about discuss that I think is a, has a huge influence or cap is capable of huge influence for everyone listening is words matter. And, yeah. you know, you emphasized in the book, a verse from James and I'm going to open my book real quick so that I can refer to the actual scripture that you said, but James three, six, and then again, Proverbs 18, 21. And in 18, Proverbs 18, 21, it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And mm -hmm. when we think about the tongue, that is our words. That is what is being reflected there. And what we say to ourselves or what we say to other people about ourselves 
is what ultimately is going to be the outcome. And yep. I love that you included this in the book, because if we wake up every morning saying, oh, I have anxiety or, oh, I am anxious or, oh, I am so tired. Mm -hmm. That is going to set the stage for how our day goes. If we can right. flip it the switch of that conversation with ourselves or to whom we're speaking to, if we can say, I'm feeling a little anxious, but I'm going to get curious about that and discover how I can address this and move forward. Or what is God saying to me about that? Or, you know what? I had just the right amount of sleep that God intended for me to have. We can actually flip that conversation in our head and we start with those positive thoughts and beliefs. Yeah. We can actually change the neural pathways in our brain. That's right. Yeah. And it's fascinating because there's so much scripture that talks about the power of our thoughts, our beliefs, our words to change um, basically the whole outcome of our lives, not just even our health. And so you're right, like knowing our identity in the Lord is is critical because that that's, forms the basis for everything else in our life. And when we know who we are in him, we have success in every area of our lives. And so that is, you know, that's so important. And what's interesting is that, you know, science confirms what the Bible already says, because as you, you know, as you're, we were talking about Caroline Leaf and how she talks about the power of our words to influence our physical bodies. And in the research that I've done over the years in, you know, the books I've written for medical doctors, I've discovered too that our genes are influenced really powerfully by our thoughts. And so, um, you know, it used to be people would say that we are victims of our genes of, uh, you know, whatever diseases our grandparents had and so on. But the truth is, is that we were not because we can influence our gene expression through our beliefs, through our thoughts and, and through our words and our behaviors. And so, um, and that's, and that's been scientifically proven. So it's like, you know, science has proven what God said many years ago. And, and, you know, and if you're somebody like me who battled, I battled a lot of depression and anxiety um, when I had Lyme disease and I would say to God, I can't change my thoughts. My chemistry is a mess. And God showed me that while it is true that disease changes the chemistry of our, you know, disease can affect our thoughts. Disease can affect um, our outlook and our mood. We can still affect and change that chemistry by intentionally choosing to think his thoughts and speak his thoughts. And um, I know that's difficult when you have um, a lot of biochemical imbalances. But the thing is, is that if your spirit man is higher, right, than um, your physical body, then that means that your, that your spirit in cooperation with your mind and the spirit of God can still take dominion over your chemistry, even if initially it doesn't feel like it. And that's the challenge that a lot of people have, I think, is that they just say, well, I've got a biochemical depression or anxiety and or, um, you know, I'm in premenopause and and I, I really can't think positive. And my experience has been that, yes, if you um, um, have biochemical imbalances, as a lot of us do, it can be very difficult to take your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. But nonetheless, when we receive a revelation of who God is in us, okay, because it's more about revelation. And God showed me that one day. He said, you don't believe because you haven't yet received the revelation that I in you am greater than your chemistry. And so one day I really put that to the test and I began to do um, what I call a brain retraining practice according to the leading of God's spirit. And so this practice involved speaking his word. It involved doing visualizations of seeing myself well. It involved... Um, you know, stepping out to do things that were difficult. And every time I had a disease based thought or wanted to speak something negative about my health, I would stop and God would have me speak his word and his truths over myself instead. And when I did that over a period of, I want to say it was nine months, I improved about 70% in my health because what, what I learned to do was think higher 
than my chemistry. Um, you know, it was kind of like, even though my brain was saying, you're, you can't think, you know, you're, there's no way you're going to heal. You're just too negative. You know, that was also the devil. Cause we got to remember too, we have an enemy who wants to stop us and tell us that, no, you can't do it. It's too hard. You've been sick too long. You're, you've got too much chemical depression, but nonetheless, no matter what we have, God's principles are still true and they are above the physical realm. And so when I practiced brain retraining, according to God's leading, over time, I started to see change in my physical body. But it's like um, Annie Hopper, who has a brain retraining program called Dynamic Neural Retraining, says, she says, you have to learn to think higher than how you feel. And so it's, you know, and when you do that over time, it changes how you feel. The one thing that you talked about in the book was trauma and how past traumas also influence disease in the body. And yes. I would love for you to touch on that because I think there are so many people, one who may not recognize that they experience trauma because we see other people who have it so much worse than we have it. And so even if we've experienced something that may have been a traumatic expression within our brain, and it is now influencing our body, even if it wasn't as bad as something someone else has mm -hmm. experienced related mm -hmm. to trauma. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And like you say, a lot of people don't recognize when they have trauma, but we've all had things happen to us. And some people more than others, you know, they've done a lot of studies and found that people who have a certain number of adverse life experiences in childhood are at a much higher risk for developing chronic illness in adulthood, which is really sad, you know, but the good news is, is that God can use everything that we go through and turn it around and bring a lot of good out of it. And so, um, you know, and I was one of those people who had a lot of trauma in my upbringing, um, a lot of word curses spoken over me, you know, just really like the enemy just wanted to flatten me from day one. And, um, and so I came into adulthood with a lot of fears about the world, um, a lot of dysfunctional thinking, a lot of dysfunctional beliefs. And the Lord had to come in and speak truth to me and say, these are the lies you're believing. Um, and it's affecting your body because what happens is when you have negative thoughts of any kind, when you experience anger, grief, sadness, depression, um, that affects your cellular chemistry. And it, it sets in place inflammatory processes that open the door for pathogenic organisms and toxins to take over your body. So while it is true that we are living in an environment where there's like a lot of mold, there's a lot of Lyme disease organisms, just a lot of pathogenic microbes and things like that that are making people sick the truth is is we can overcome the natural realm by the spirit of god in us and so when the lord showed me that the first thing he did was tell me we got to work on your beliefs because um every time you think something that's contrary to my word you're sending a message to your cells that promotes that negative thinking that promotes illness and so as um as part of the brain retraining and mind renewal process, we have to agree with what God says about us, right? We have to, and, and his thoughts toward us are always more life-giving. They're always more positive than the things we think about ourselves, right? Because how many of us, like as, as women, especially we look in the mirror and we go, gosh, you look terrible today. You know, you're, you're getting fat or, you know, whatever the, whatever the thought is. And we have to look in the mirror and say, no, you're beautiful. You're precious. You're made in the image of God. And um, as contrary as that may feel to our soul, we need to agree with God about who we are. And when we do that, it heals us right from the uh -huh. inside out. Yeah, absolutely. And you've, you've said the word soul so many times in this conversation. And I think it's important to, you know, really look at what the soul is and the soul is it's made up of our mind and our conscience and our will and our emotions. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, when you look at how complex that is, how can mm -hmm. we navigate that on our own without the help of Christ, you know, or without having the Holy spirit there to 
to mend it, to hold it together, to, to support us and give us the strength and the wisdom that we need to be able to, to put one foot in front of the other every single day. So that just came to my mind and I, I wanted to emphasize that. I think a lot of people who have experienced trauma, and I think, I, I just want your perspective on this because I feel sure. like a lot of people who have experienced trauma go into victim mode and they stay in victim mode. And without having that relationship in, with Christ, and and I don't mean knowing scripture, memorizing scripture and being able to, to speak scripture is completely different than having a relationship where you truly believe what your identity is and what he says about you yeah. and conversing mm -hmm. with him every day. I think it's totally different than having faith and knowing the word, right? And yeah, I could be off it, base there, but I, but I really do believe that. Um, so mm -hmm. without that though, that victim mentality, which I think yeah. is heavily influenced by Satan, it just weighs you down. Like you can't, and that's yeah. what you have to, to be able to almost shed like all of those beliefs mm -hmm. that you're not a victim because exactly. that's not how Christ created you. No, that and that's that's a really good point, Robin. And I think, you know, a lot of people who have had trauma also have misconceptions about who God is. And sometimes you might need the help of a counselor or a minister to help you to see the Lord for who he truly is for you. Because, you know, um, like, for instance, if you were raised in a punishing environment like I was, you might see God as punishing. And I know I did. And the Lord really had to correct me on that. And he did it in a number of ways. He did it through my one-on-one -on -one time with him. Um, he also did it through other people who spoke life into me. He did it through um, doing inner healing ministry. And so, you know, sometimes he will use those tools to help us get past uh, maybe blocks to receiving from him. And we also have to realize that whenever we have trauma, there are demonic entities, there are demonic spirits that attach to that. And so as part of our healing, you know, as and something that I talk about in Guard the Mind, Men the Body is the importance of breaking demonic strongholds and in, in doing even self-deliverance or deliverance with a minister, because what they do is, you know, they they'll attach to rejection or abandonment or whatever it is. And then they, you know, the, there's there are literally spirits of rejection and abandonment, fear, and so on that come in to reinforce the lies that we believe, and they come in to keep us us from being able to walk out into freedom in the Lord. But I think it's most important to get healing from the trauma because sometimes, you know, the demonic will automatically leave when you get your soul healed. But at other times, you may need deliverance. I think all of us, even believers, you know, um, we need to be delivered. And while when you're in Christ, obviously, you can't be possessed by a demon, but you can be oppressed. And so, you know, healing that is really, really important. And, and I want to say on the, you know, on the subject of the soul, we can feed our soul with the things of God, or we can feed our soul with the things of the world. And we lose our power in the Lord when we feed our soul, our mind, our will and emotions with the things of the world. And, you know, and, and so what happens is our soul gets really fat on the things of the world, while our spirit is anemic, if we neglect that relationship with God. And so that's why when we feed our spirit through communion with him, through praise and worship, through studying his word, and through serving others, we grow our spirit man, so that it can take dominion over our soul, and with that, our physical body, instead of the other way around. Mm. I love that. That's beautiful. So Connie, tell Thanks. us about when you say that you're a prophetic healer, what does that mean? Yeah. So um, about 15 years ago, God showed me in the book of Isaiah that when Jesus went to the cross, he was made an atoning sacrifice, mm -hmm. not only for our sins, but for our sicknesses as well. And so what that means is that provisionally, God, Jesus, um, when he died on the cross, he said, I'm taking all your sins upon me, but also your sicknesses. And so that we would have the power to overcome disease by the power of Holy Spirit in us, right? But um, 
but yeah, that it, it can, that's a process, right? Through different, there are different ways in which um, God can heal us. And so what he showed me many years ago was that he also heals us supernaturally. So he heals us through relationship with him and through his word and through the power of mind renewal. But he also heals us um, through prophetic words and through um, prayer. And so what I started to do 15 years ago was host Zoom. Well, Zoom wasn't around them, but they, by, back then it was just, you know, group phone calls where we'd pray for each other. And, and then I was also a minister at a church in, here in Colorado, and I saw God do healing miracles in people. So he put it upon my heart to just start doing healing prayer meetings. And so, um, and so when I say I'm a prophetic healing prayer minister, what that just means is that God gives me words of wisdom and knowledge for other people as I'm praying for their healing. Um, because sometimes we get healed through a miraculous touch of God, but sometimes we get healed through um, just hearing words of truth from him, which comes through the gift of prophecy. Mm. So it's not like that's you're talking about your question. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's, said, it's a good, it's a good answer. I think, because I think there's a lot of mis misconception and years ago I would have been like, yeah, whatever that just does not happen. I remember when my father was sick with, with cancer and like some people they knew came from a church, not our church, but a different church. And they, they did the whole like praying with hands, you know, where they, everybody was touching him and they were praying and, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you hope for a miracle, but yet I was so skeptical, like this, whatever, this mm -hmm. is, this is so out there, you know, but mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people have that, like, if you're not, I, my relationship with Christ has grown so much to the point now where, I can believe these things because I have been in scripture and I'm learning every single day. Whereas, you know, back then that relationship was not in existence as it is today. And I think, so I, I just, I really wanted you to be able to say like what that is so people can understand, like there is actually so much power that he yeah. he, he sends through us and it is yeah. supernatural because it's not something our natural bodies can do on their own. It comes directly from him. Yeah, that's right. And, and God heals us in different ways, right? So a divine miracle is only one way, but I have seen him do major healings that way, healings from cancer, Lyme, disease, different things. And if you've been prayed for and you haven't received a miracle, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want to heal you. It just might mean that there's another path or there's a block in the spiritual realm that, you know, you need to discern because sometimes um, we can have curses like generational curses um, that are over us, for instance, that, and that keep us from being able to receive that healing. But um, the good news is, is God's will, I believe, is for us all to be well, because he wants us to fulfill the purpose for which he created us. And most of us can best fulfill our purpose in health. And, you know, he didn't make the human body to be sick. He made us in health in the Garden of Eden. And so I believe he wants to restore us. You know, he wants to wants us to bring heaven to earth and he wants us to be fully functioning in um, who he's created us to be. And so I think, you know, if you receive, if you've received healing prayer and not been healed, you can still be divinely healed by his spirit in you when you live according to his precepts, according to his word. And, you know, going back to the mind thing, just um, renewing our mind daily with the word of God and living in alignment with what he says about us and agreeing with that, you know, and the enemy is always going to come against us and tell us, who were not, and he just, he doesn't take days off. And so, you know, don't be surprised when you say, well, why doesn't this battle end? It, it does, and it gets easier, I think, the more we stand in alignment with him. But, you know, we have to realize we do have an enemy. And so we also have to, you know, renew our minds daily, put on the armor of God daily, like his word says, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Ephesians 6, I love that mm -hmm. whole section. And actually, we have a whole episode on the armor of mm -hmm. God, and I'll, I'll link that. Um, so as you were talking, it, it made me think of the fact, so when my dad was sick, he would say, I'm in a win-win. I either get a healing miracle on earth, or I get the divine miracle of life in heaven. 
So yeah. he always had that approach. But I think what's so important to emphasize is that I, we're we're told to pray according to his will, not our will. So we also have our have to have our heart right because and and mm-hmm. preface our prayers in that way that his will be done, not ours. Yeah. And even yeah. Jesus yeah. used that prayer, mm-hmm. right? In the Garden That's of right. Gethsemane, that not my will mm-hmm. be done, but yours. Exactly. Yeah. And that's really important. And I think, you know, even another way that God heals us is through um, our relationships, through the way we live, because sometimes we get sick because we're not living in accordance with the laws that God set forth from the beginning of time. So for instance, you know, eating food, like he created it originally and, um, you know, going to bed and getting enough sleep and going to bed at the right time, being in life, giving relationships with other believers, um, taking a Sabbath every week, just doing those basic things that he's told us to do so that we would have health and life in our bodies. And so, um, you know, I think that's another important way in which he heals. He leads us to the right decisions and he can anoint and bless medicine as well. And, but it's like you said, we just have to know what he's saying. What is his will? And he speaks to us, you know, his word says that my sheep hear my voice. And so if we are his sheep, we, we have to trust that he's going to lead us, that he's going to show us what to do. And he's going to speak words. um, You know, he's going to, everything he speaks to us is going to be life giving, right? It's Mm -hmm. not, Mm -hmm. and God will correct us, but when there's correction, it doesn't bring condemnation, it brings conviction. And so, um, you know, on that note, I want to say one thing that I really recommend doing, and I talk about this in the book as well, is asking God, what are all, what are the lies that I believe on a regular basis? Because most of us have a core set of lies, right? It'll say Mm -hmm. five or 10 major lies. And I'll tell people, write those down. And then for every lie you believe, ask the Lord, what is your truth? What do you, how do you see me? And then write that down and start reciting that every time the lie rears its ugly head. Okay. Because when you have it written down, you can see it and then it becomes, and then you can with repetition, it changes your brain chemistry. It changes your habitual thoughts, right? So that instead of defaulting to the negative over time, you start thinking his thoughts instead. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Yes. So listeners, I'm going to link in the show notes, an episode on um, what is your identity in Christ? Who does Christ say you are? Because that is right in line with what Connie just said and doing that exercise. And I'll also link the episode on the mindset modeling, which I highly emphasize because it goes to when we, when we have something in our brain, if we get it out onto paper, that the, just the technicality of taking it from our brain and writing it down and getting it out onto paper, we can see it and we can actually more readily recognize that it's not rational. It's not true it's a lie, all of those things, like what Connie just said. And then you can write the positive next to it and your brain will start to see that. And you'll be able to catch those thoughts and challenge them and correct them in collaboration with the Holy spirit much faster. And your confidence will store, will soar and you'll have more control over your thoughts. Connie, this has been so powerful. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And I'll just hold up my book real quick if anyone wants to see it. Um, So you guys, you can find this on Amazon. And this is a a culmination of everything that God's taught me about healing over the last 20 years. So I encourage you to get it. And uh, you can learn more about my work at ConnieStrassheim.org. You can also send me an email. I still have an old Gmail account. And that's Connie9824 at gmail.com. And I will put the link to the book in the show notes. So listeners, all you have to do is click that to go to Amazon to purchase it. Thank you so much, Connie, for being here. You are a blessing. And I loved the book and listeners, I encourage you to get it. And if not for yourself, for someone you love. And if you enjoyed the episode, I ask that you please subscribe and leave a rating and review. That way I can continue to get more wonderful, powerful, amazing guests like Connie. And I hope that you really take all of this to heart and dive into scripture and start growing in your relationship with God as well. 
All right, blessings to all, and I will see you all next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.